Welcome to the Panthers Courtside Report presented by Bel Air Cantina. Head over to your local Bel Air Cantina today to support this year's Powered by Taco Partner, the YMCA Camp Minicani, by grabbing your very own Minicani Magic Taco. Welcome inside the show, everybody. He's head coach Pat Baldwin. My name is Scott Warris. Coach, let's get right to it. Let's take a step back. You're just beginning conference play, but let's go back to the non-conference. And it was, it was quite a challenge. Games at then number two Kansas, in the Kohl Center, at Madison against the Wisconsin Badgers. I guess when you look back, what do you hope and what do you think your guys took from playing those two quality power conference schools in two very hostile environments? You know, I think the, the one thing that we took out of it, and, and first of all, what I understand about our guys is they want to compete in environments like that. Um, uh, you know, you look at T. John Lucas, who had played at Illinois, he was familiar with, with Wisconsin. Um, you know, playing at the level against a team like, like Kansas, he understands. And, um, you know, some of our other guys, I think they were, you know, they, they were looking forward to that opportunity and, you know, especially playing against uh, a Wisconsin and in-state uh, team. And, and what I took out of it is just, you know, we're going to be, and hopefully we're in situations like that during the season um, where it's going to be in a hostile environment. You know, certainly Northern Kentucky, Wright State, they certainly have that type of environment um, from the standpoint of a, a crowd against you and all of that. And, and I want to prepare our guys for, you know, you know, for those types of games um, where, you know, everything's stacked up against you a little bit. So, but the other thing that I took out of is just our competitiveness. I think our guys are, you know, competing at a high level. You look at our game against Wisconsin, we were down, what, six, I don't know, six against Wisconsin or two, whatever the score was, but uh, at half. So our guys were competing and they were, you know, playing at a high level. And, uh, you know, we, you know, you hate to say this, but you look for any pauses in a game where, when we're playing against Kansas, you know, our first half wasn't as good. And then our second half, we almost played them even. Um, so you look at those pod positives in, in those games as well. And there's something to be taken too, Coach, from a, from a non-conference stretch that was very favorable to the home slate early. But, you know, the, the second half, think of maybe one home game in a 44-day stretch. To be road warriors, if we can use that phrase, and to be road tested, goes a long way to building the character of a team. No doubt about it. It, it definitely will set the barometer to bar, barometer of what you want to look at with your team. And, and hopefully with our guys from all those, those road games in December that, uh, you know, it, it, it built some toughness with our guys, um, that togetherness that you, that you need. And, um, you know, so hopefully that serves well for us down the line and hopefully we're playing for something late in the season. We'll talk more about some specific players in the second segment of the show, but when you look at, at the progress and the work of these guys playing together, um, you look at the last starting lineup, for example, last time out, and only two of those guys were playing for you last year. There's still something, is there not to be said for building chemistry? That really never ends. That, that, that's an ongoing process. You know, it's, it's funny that you say that. We were just talking about the, the chemistry portion of that, which it, it, it takes a while to, to build all those things up. You know, as you mentioned, Tijon didn't play last year. Uh, CJ and, and Courtney and Josh, even those guys, uh, they weren't even here last year. So it, it still takes some time to, to build all those things together and that, that chemistry you need out there on the floor and learning each other. And, and, um, but, you know, as a coach, you always say, let's, let's get it quickly. You know, let's figure this out quickly and, and uh, get, to, get to winning. So, uh, but I feel confident that our guys will, will pick everything up. They'll start learning. Uh, where, we, where each other likes to be out there on the floor, um, make the plays that we need to, be in the right spots defensively, and uh, you know, hopefully that happens sooner than later. And it is a group that certainly off the court, off the floor, enjoys being around one another, and that goes a long way in building that on-court chemistry, does it not? Yeah, I think that's the first thing that needs to happen. Your locker room, off the court, all those things in the apartments, the dorms, all that stuff that needs to take form and take shape first, and then if you don't have that, then on the court, it's it's a lot more difficult to try to accomplish the, the things that you want to. So our guys love each other. They love being around each other. And, uh, you know, hopefully, you know, that translates into the things that we that we want to see out there on the court. One of the things happening on the court, 
turning your opponents over almost a little over 16 times a game, which is tops in the Horizon League. Coach, we'll take a quick break. When we come back, you've mentioned some names that maybe some fans are not all that familiar with as of yet. We'll delve a little deeper into some of those names, some of those newcomers, names that you need to know as you follow this Milwaukee Panthers program, not just this year, but moving ahead. He's Coach Pat Baldwin. I'm Scott Warris. More of the Panthers courtside report in just a brief moment. Stick around. Welcome back to the Panthers Courtside Report presented by Bel Air Cantina talking men's hoops with the head coach, Pat Baldwin. We name dropped in the first segment. Let's delve a little deeper now. T. John Lucas, former Milwaukee, Washington standout, spent his first two years of college ball down in Champaign at Illinois, had to redshirt last year in the transfer in. There's a lot of hype surrounding this young man. Has he answered that bell? Has he given you what you wanted from him? Yeah, I, I think he's done a terrific job for our group. You know, first of all, he's a leader. All of our guys love being around him. And, you know, that's the, that's the first order of business anytime you bring in a transfer and, um, and so, someone of his caliber. Um, on the floor, he's been terrific. Uh, he's been terrific in the huddle. He's been great with our young guys. And with his play, I mean, he's had some 20-point games. He's had some high assist games. And, you know, at one point he was leading us in rebounds. So he's, he's doing a lot of different things out there on the floor. Um, you know, we just want to cap it off, you know, all those, those great things with wins. His leadership, that was even shown last year, wasn't it, when he wasn't playing in games, practicing, yes, but not in games? No question about it. I mean, we would see sometimes either watching on film or even during, during games, he would be talking to you know, his teammates during the game while he wasn't playing um, and in his street clothes. So, so that's, that's a, a, an attribute that some, some kids just don't have, and I think naturally he's built that way. We've seen, especially in recent weeks, the, the backcourt tandem of Lucas and Darius Roy, who was your you know, leading scorer and in many ways a leader for you last year, starting to play within themselves, playing together. We talk about chemistry, playing together, better. Uh, Darius comes off a stretch, a uh, three-game stretch of scoring 20 or more points. No one's done that in these parts in almost a decade. What is Darius doing so well right now that you need from him the rest of his season? Well, I think everybody knows that Darius is a scorer first and foremost. And, you know, we tried to, to play him at the point guard position last year. We asked him to do a lot. You know, I think this year, you know, he's letting the game come to him a little bit more. And I think Tijon allows him to, to step back a little bit and not have to take on as much of the ball handling role and setting up everybody else, but allowing him to be a natural scorer. Um, you know, we need him to you know, continue to shoot, in the, shoot the three ball, get into the paint. And, uh, you know, the other part is we want him to get to the free throw line a lot more, too. He's a very good free throw shooter. And, uh, but those two playing together, I envision this where I knew Tijon loves to get rid of, you know, get, give up the basketball, make the plays. And, and certainly he's finding Darius in, in, in some easy scoring positions. Um, so with those two guys, you know, and hopefully that, that chemistry continues to build and we're able to, um, like I said, find those wins that we're certainly are looking for. What do you make of the trajectory of Darius's shot? I don't remember, now tell me if I'm wrong, I don't remember last year there being such a remarkable arc or arch on, his, on every one of his shots. Last year I called them rainmakers, ceiling scrapers, they were there, but uh, there's something to that shot. W what goes on in terms of that dynamic? Well, I think for him, where he shoots it from, I don't want to give any tips to, to any other teams, but um, he has to get it up in the air. You know, he's not a, a huge player, uh, but if he's coming off of a screen or a catch and shoot or anything like that, you know, he has to get the arc on the, on the shot in, in order for it to go in and get over the defender's hand. But, you know, that's something that's been crafted over the years, and um, I'm just happy that, that more times than not it goes in. Yeah, he's certainly got the touch to it, no doubt about it. Um, T. John is a newcomer. Uh, a couple of freshmen, though, C.J. Wilborn and Courtney Brown Jr., two young men that have not looked like freshmen at times, and you have asked them to sometimes play more than maybe most freshmen would. You've asked a lot about a lot from them this year. Big things on the horizon for these guys. No question about it. You know, when you come in as a freshman, it's really difficult. There's so many things that, that you have to contend with. You have to, obviously, off the court academically. You have to take care of your business that way. And then, um, you know, for us, 
we envision them playing early, but not as much. I mean, you never know. You know, sometimes freshmen they come in, they they uh, you know take some time, but but we wanted them to, and, and they er inserted themselves into the lineup by their play and their hard work, and physically they were ready to play. Um, you know, now I think they're they're catching up to the speed of the game and the, at the college level. And to me, it's really going to be a matter of time before they, they really take off. Um, sometimes with freshmen, it's easier for ball handling guards to come in and, and try to get some things done. Off the ball, it's a little bit, you know, when do I find my shot and those opportunities. And, uh, but on the defensive end, both of those guys are really contributing as well. So like you just said, it's, I'm, I'm really excited about their future. They're great kids. They're tremendously hard workers. And, you know, I'm just excited that we have them in our program. Only about 20 seconds left, but right now, at this point in the season, what has you most encouraged about your guys? Our guys are still fighting. You know, they're, they're competitors. They're, they're eager to, you know, to get out on the floor each and every day. And as long as we fight, we're, we're going to be great. All right, Coach. Taking the fight to the rivals, Green Bay, Saturday night, uh, tough venue. Crest Center, 6 o'clock, Panthers and Phoenix. Best of skill up in Titletown, Coach. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. We'll do it again next week. Stick around. Much more still to come in the Panthers Courtside Report. We'll turn our attention to the women's side of the court. Kyle Recklitz, head coach of the Panther women, and Matt Menzel chat next right here. Stick around on the Panthers Courtside Report. Welcome back to the Panthers Courtside Report presented by Bel Air Cantina. As we turn our attention now to women's basketball, Matt Menzel alongside Panthers head coach Kyle Recklitz. And as we sit here, coach, hitting the halfway point of the regular season, and you look at the first part of this 2019 20 campaign, how do you go about assessing the way things have played out thus far? Well, different than we expected, I would say. Um, but I'm incredibly proud of our team's heart. Um, there's not been a game yet this season that I feel like we have quit or stopped playing. Um, we had a brutally tough non-conference schedule, um, which was planned for, also thinking that we were gonna have everybody healthy. Um, but you had to roll with the punches, and I think it's made us actually better, um, and hopefully it'll pay off dividends when we hit conference. And speaking of non-conference play, I wanted to bring up that tough non-conference slate, because every coach is different from a philosophy standpoint, how you go about scheduling. Kind of describe how you guys go about, you know, figuring out each year how you want to go about scheduling when it comes to non-conference. This year was a little different. Um, you know, we had some return games that were already some really great op opponents, and then we really wanted to get Lizzie and Megan home. Um, Lizzie being a senior, we wanted her to be able to play at the U and in front of our family and friends, and, and that was a big game for us. Um, we had actually scheduled that to be a little bit later, um, and then a the team had dropped us, and so we had to pick up Purdue because we just really didn't have anything. So it was just kind of like one thing after another. They kind of all toppled on top of each other. Um, but like I said, I, we weren't scared going into any of the games. We, I don't think anybody on our team had like a fear about themselves like when we hit the non-conference schedule. I think they were really excited, and we really took everything every game as they came. I always said if you were to walk into one of our practices, you would have never guessed that we were having a losing season. Now one of the highlights as far as victories go here in the non-conference was a victory against Northern Illinois, a mid-American conference opponent. And that, you know, started off a program record tying six-game homestand. You look back at that victory, I know Sydney Lovey had a monster performance, knocking down eight threes, tied for his second most in a game in program history. Lizzie Odegaard came off the bench and brought down 17 rebounds. Mm -hmm. What do, you, what do you take away from that victory, which I, I really do believe when you look at the, the results in non-conference play is a highlight? Absolutely, it's a highlight. I mean, they are a fast-paced team, so it, we really try to compare teams that we play in the non-conference schedule to teams that we're going to see in our league. Um, and obviously the MAC had some really strong performances last year and, and are having some strong performances this year, so it was a really, a really good game circled on our schedule, especially to have it at home. Um, and I thought we just came out with a, a really good sense of like intensity and energy and um, after being on the road for so long, it was nice to be able to play in front of our friends and family. And we had a couple people step up. And, and that's been the part that we've really been talking to our team about. You mentioned it was game one of a program record tying six game homestand. How big of a luxury was that to be home all of December? When you look at the month of December, not only you're ending you know, the, the first semester, but I mean, there's so many other things that are going on in, in the holidays. But to be able to you know, take care of all that while being home the entire month. 
Yeah, you know, it was really nice. You you develop a routine, um, a routine that we hope that they get used to when we're playing at home in conference. Um, they're sleeping in their own beds. Um, we're able to, you know, gear their nutrition a little bit more when we're at home. We know what they're eating based off of um, what we're putting in front of them. Um, so it just is a, uh, it is a benefit for sure. And then it's just, I think there's this relaxation because they shoot in that gym all the time so they know they can hit shots. Again, regardless of wins and losses, were you pleased with the progress though you saw over the course of that non-conference slate? Absolutely, because even the mid-major teams that we were playing towards the end, Bowling Green, North Dakota, I mean, they were some really good teams. I mean, they were all, you know, ranked in that, you know, right around the 115 to, you know, top 100 range, um, and we were competing. I mean, it was really close games throughout, and then, you know, we would foul towards the end, and, you know, they would, they would make free throws and stuff. So um, I think we learned a lot about ourselves in those moments, and I think we also learned what we still needed to do for a conference. So you sit here right now, how would you, you know, I, I use the word assess, but I guess as, as again, at the halfway point of the season, kind of assessing the way things are going right now, how would you assess the offense and the defense? I think our defense has really started to improve here as of late. Um, I think that we're really, you know, locked into that aspect. We keep saying, you know, the offense is going to come and go, but defense is hard. And defense is something that you can play every single possession um, that you can buy into. And it, all it takes is some communication and, and just hustle. Um, you know, with the offensive side, you know, we've just really been struggling at times to put the ball in the basket. Um, you know, what I, I would never have expected Jamie Wright to be shooting the percentage that she's shooting. She's an unbelievable shooter. Um, really excited when she She's going to get that locked in because I know it's coming um, and she'll get that she'll get that going for us again here soon. Lizzie Odegaard is a great shooter. I mean, in the past, we've had these people shooting, you know, in those 30, 40 percent from three. And now we're putting a lot of pressure on Sydney Levy and Alyssa Fisher to hit a lot of outside shots. Um, so, you know, sometimes they have some off games and then it's a little scary as to where our points are going to come from. So offensively, we're still trying to figure things out. We're still trying to, you know, everybody's getting in, getting a lot of work in to try to fix their shots. But um, I'm proud of their effort, but we need to get that together in order to be a really successful team and conference. And certainly as the weeks go on, we'll talk more and more about some of the individuals on this team, but at least for this first edition, I do want to bring up Sydney Levy, what you've seen from her so far, but also Brandy Bisping, who is the definition of tough. Yeah. yeah, so Levy is just, um, she is confident. I think that would be the word I would use for her. She's, you know, I think Coach uh, Durante Plate said it the best. She, he said the first time she was in the gym and wasn't hitting shots, he was like, that's okay, just take the next one. And, and she just stopped and turned to him and she said, you will never have to worry about me taking the next one. Whether I'm hitting or missing, I'm going to be shooting. And, and I appreciate that as a shooter myself. Like, you have to have that confidence. Um, and then you look at Brandy Bisping, and she's our heart. Um, she just gives it all out every possession. She is physically intense. She is emotionally intense. Um, she's holding our team accountable from a leadership perspective. Um, we wouldn't be successful without her on the court. All right, more to come after this here on the Panthers Courtside Report presented by Beller Cantina. Welcome back to the Panthers Courtside Report presented by Beller Cantina. Once again, being joined by Panther women's basketball head coach Kyle Recklitz. And the week ahead, you know, we've been talking all about non-conference play, but right in the thick of things here in Horizon League play. And it's a road trip wrapping up a stretch of three straight away from home with a road trip to Michigan. First up, Detroit Mercy on Thursday at 6 o'clock tip-off, and then a Saturday, 2 o'clock at Oakland. And regardless of wins and losses for those two programs, those are two very tough venues to come away with victories in. Absolutely. And, you know, we struggled last year at Detroit, and so I'm hoping that we get our mindset right going into the Detroit game. Um, and they've obviously been playing, you know, you look at their record and you think, oh, that's that's a win, but that's not the case. Um, they've been playing better and better every game. They've had multiple freshmen of the weeks. Um, they've had different people stepping up. So you have to hope that they don't all put games together at the exact same time because they actually have a lot of players that are really capable. Um, and then Oakland has, has really increased their pace again. So you're going from one game that's going to be a fight it out battle to then now you got to get your transition legs under you um, two nights later. So it's, it's going to be a test for us for sure. And getting back on the road um, is always something we've got to get back in the flow again because we've been, we've been home. <laughs> yeah. So now it's, it's, you know, travel again and all that kind of stuff. Well, speaking of getting our minds right, let's talk food. And here our last segment, we give you an inside look at Bel Air Cantina and Panther Athletics serving our local Milwaukee community. Uh, Kent Minicani is part of the YMCA Metropolitan Milwaukee. We just celebrated our 100th year 
We're a residential summer camp and a conference and retreat center year round. We do about 3,000 kids in the summer and about 10,000 people during the school year come out. Churches and scouts and families and a lot of university groups come on out. In 1919, the YMCA Metropolitan Milwaukee bought 150 acres out in Hubertus and built the first lodge, Fireside Lodge, which is still there, and, uh, and knew the power of camping and brought that to the Milwaukee uh, community. And we've been going strong for 100 years. Oh, so exciting. So Bel Air, A, coolest place in town, best place in town to have any your meals, okay? B, super philanthropic. They support so much in this community. It's, it's incredible to have learned everything that they do. And this year, Camp Minakani and the YMCA were, uh, we were awarded the Powered by Tacos grant, which uh, secures us funds for scholarships for next year. So for every taco sold and eaten and enjoyed and devoured, and you want to order more right away, they're so good, um, dollars go to us to send kids to camp that couldn't otherwise afford it. The Kemeny County Taco, oh my gosh. Actually, the, so first of all, the marinade is a secret old school Minicani alumni recipe that uh, may or may not have been uh, awarded, uh, you know, some acknowledgement in the Lambeau Field uh, tailgate section. So it's kind of famous. Chef Noy made it even better. So it's a garlic soy marinade. It has roasted corn salsa, it has crema, and of course, the charred marshmallow, which was not my idea. It was genius, totally genius. At first you can be like, what? And then you eat it and it's amazing. What we do at Minicani is we have the most insane, fun, incredible week, but that's just kind of like the shell. And what we're really doing is building, we're building acceptance for others, we're building self-esteem and confidence and getting to know people different from yourselves, and we wrap it in that insanity, super fun Minicani tradition. What this Power by Tacos gets to do is have kids that can't afford to go to summer camp because it is a fee-based program. We get to reach out in the community and bring even more kids to camp uh, that couldn't normally afford it, and all because of these amazing tacos. All right, that will do it for this week's edition of the Panthers Courtside Report presented by Bel Air Cantina. Thanks for watching. We'll do it again next week.